Hiya. Yeah. So I recently got a uh, handlebar phone holder so that I could use my phone as a GPS. Basically, I didn't see the advantage of buying a separate by computer if my phone already has GPS built in and it has a better screen and it allows me to take pictures. So I just wanted to do that. I found a really nice and secure mount from Quadlock. It is very tiny. It requires you to use their phone cases to create a secure connection between the mount and your phone. Once you have the case on, it snaps in place super securely and it has this little locking mechanism on the back so it can't fall out by itself. You have to push this piece back first. This got me thinking if I could also use this mount to turn my phone into an action camera. Phone cameras have gotten incredibly good in recent years, so there might be no need to buy a separate action camera to take footage of your ride. So I turned the mount 90 degrees forwards to be front facing and then I put the phone back in place and I used the front facing camera to record some cycle footage. And this was the result. The footage is very, very shaky and it's basically unusable for any project. I was really wondering what the reason was for these weird wobbly motions. I thought that maybe the front camera is really not meant for this. And then I thought that I could also just flip around the phone in the case and use the back camera in a very similar setup. Because I didn't have access to the screen anymore, I started the video capture using my Apple Watch. I used the setup to cycle around London on a much, much smoother road than on the first video. But still, here's the outcome of this ride. As you can see, it's just as bad as the first one, and it's also unusable footage. I'm not quite sure what the problem is that renders this footage unusable. It looks like a combination of very poor image stabilization, a very confused autofocus, and some rolling shutter artifacts of my iPhone X. Even though modern smartphones do have optical image stabilization, its limited range of motion can't keep up with the vibrations of the bike frame. You could probably get better footage by strapping the phone to your chest as your body would act as a dampener for the vibrations, but this would also require special straps and other gear, which was not the goal of this video experiment. There might be some setup where you use a separate gimbal to attach your phone to and then put it on the handlebars, that might work. But then again, if you're required to buy special gear to use your phone for this, you might as well get a proper action camera. Luckily, Quadlog even sells another phone mount, which is called Outfront Mount Pro, that has an additional mount included where you can put an action camera. This mount even puts the phone in a better position as it's more central on the handlebar and it's straight in your field of view so you don't have to look down that much. And with this setup you get much better and much more stable footage. I hope you enjoyed this video and I've shown you why it's worth it to get a separate action camera for your rides and also which mounts you should use to put it on your handlebars. Happy cycling! Here's some footage from a ride with the GoPro attached to the phone mount. Bye bye!